And before we actually begin to dive into any development on our project, the first thing I would like us to do is to create two different projects. The first is going to be our API, and the second is going to be our INEC4 application. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, first of all, is to create our PHP or our Laravel project, which we're going to be using for our API. So what I'm going to do now is just control shift back tick to get me my command prompt for oh why is this thing not responding please respond yep okay so now um what I'm going to do now is I want to navigate into my documents folder okay no sorry uh, okay I think it's my documents no 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 I want to move back oh sorry I'm gonna move back and again and now I want to move into my ZAM folder and um, HT Docs. And um, I think we are good here. So now we are going to create a new Laravel project. And before I continue, I want to say something right here. Um, I'm going to be using Composer to create my Laravel project. So if you want to follow along, you've not had um, you've not installed Composer, all you can simply do is let me get my Chrome and um, all right. So all you can simply do is just um, Google Composer installation, all right. And um, now once you run that, it should all right. So you can now see get composer.org and you have to download the uh, .exe file of Composer. And of course, I assume that whoever that should be taking this particular or whoever that is actually coming through this video and um, watching this API section of this video should have Apache server running as well as um, my SQL. All right, so for my Apache server, I'm going to be using ZAMP. ZAMP actually comes with both Apache and my SQL. You can use my SQL workbench. You can use whatever you feel like using. All right, so but for this particular tutorial series, I'm going to be using Composer to install a brand new Laravel project in our HD Docs folder for exam. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say Composer create project and we're going to call this project, okay, Laravel slash, of course, that's a Laravel slash Laravel. And then we're going to call this project, um, let's see, let's call it um, Face API. Mm, this API off or something? No, 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 no. You just call it um, face off, right? And now when I click on enter, it should generate my project. So what I'm going to do right here is to pause this video and wait for Composer to finish installing all the dependencies I'm going to need and scaffold the whole project for me. And then after that, I'll come back and continue this video. All right. So, our, all our dependencies are done installing. And what I just did was I ran PHP Artisan serve to be sure that everything is perfectly working. And yes, you can see on our browser that everything is perfectly working. So, once we have our Laravel dependencies as well as the whole project scaffolded, all right, the next thing we're going to be doing is to install one of the packages which we're going to need for this API, which is Timon JWT. And um, I have already opened um, a tab on my browser while I was waiting for the project to probably be scaffolded. All right, and this is actually the Timon JWT documentation. Not to worry, I'm going to leave this link below the description for you to, you know maybe read more or read further about it all right so the first thing we need to do actually is to install the time on GWT package which I already have done and um, from the documentation you can see they actually said you should use composer require time on GWT auth all right but if you use that it's gonna throw a couple of Nesbot carbon errors and we don't want that so um, the way we are going to avoid that is simply by using um, composer require time on JWT auth dev develop. All right, 
please do it this way so you can so you don't have any errors and all your packages can be all the JWT packages can be scaffolded properly. And next thing we need to do is to add a um, service provider. We're gonna add this library sub time on JWT library service provider to our config. We just add the PHP in our config file, and we're gonna add that right here. Um, this will help us to okay, so it will help us to be able to publish publish the package. So the next thing we're going to do now is publishing the package. We're going to co just copy this right here. And um, we are going to paste that in here. And oh, sorry. Okay, it's actually just published. Publish complete. So after we are done publishing, the next thing we want to do is um, we want to check if we have jwt.php, which we actually have it here. All right, you can see the file. So the next thing we are going to do now is to generate our secret key this is going to generate a secret key for us in our dot env file okay so just paste that and go in and now if i go to my dot env file you are going to see our secret key and you can see our jwt secret key created right here for us and after that the next thing we want to do is We'll go to the next tab and let's see if there are any more things for us to do um, okay I think um, that's all we're going to be looking at in documentation all right most of the things we're going to be doing from here is going to be programmatically let me see bootstrap file change generating keys quick start and oh oh okay so that is that so now we have actually generated our gwt secret key and um the next thing that we want to do is just to make sure this application runs fine and we're going to do php at season serve and we are going to come here and refresh this page and yeah it works fine uh, i actually immediately i finished scaffolding the packages i had to check php artisan serve to be sure that all the packages were fine so now here you have it everything looks good everything looks fine i'm gonna close all this and um from here the next thing we are going to do is back to our dot env file we're going to set our db configurations okay so i'm going to go i'm going to using php my admin so i'm going localhost uh, php my admin and um my username is root and my password all right okay and now that should Log me in and I'm going to create a new database. We're going to call this face off. All right, face off. And create this. Okay, so anytime I work with PHP, I like to work with PHP my admin. Then other times I like to use my MySQL workbench. But whenever I work with PHP, I like to work with PHP my admin. So that's it we've just created our database and that's all we're going to do the rest will be done through our migration okay so now we're going to go to our env file and set a couple of things here our database name is called face off right our username our username is called um root and our password just some number just some random number all right mm -hmm. yes this should be the number okay so now that actually sets that up for us so the next thing we are going to do now from here is to generate the ionic 4 project okay so to generate the ionic 4 project i'm going to open a new window 
and um, just open our terminal and we want to go cd um cd document cd ionic and we're going to say ionic start and we're going to call this phase off all right so now it's going to perform a scaffolding and what is going to happen is i'm going to pause this project okay so it asks me for before i pause the project is actually asking me for a starter template and we are going to go with just blank we don't need any of this uh oh sorry <laughs> so now let's just go with blank blank starter template and um extracting our blank starter template fetching metadata uh, so this usually takes some time so we'll be able to install all the node modules packages and scaffold some templates for us. So what I'm going to do from here is to pause this video and then resume the video once all is set. So our Ionic project is done installing and what we just want to do now is just do Ionic serve and now let us see what happens. Sorry, Ionic serve run in an Ionic project. Oh, sorry, CD face off and Ionic serve. Just to be sure that everything worked out perfectly. And we'll just wait for our project to begin. And this is not going to take long. See, go to local host. Oh, so it's already done. Internet Explorer oh, is dead. <laughs> I can't believe I've not changed Internet Explorer from being my default browser. So let's just close Internet Explorer, close our tabs, and let's get that in here. And yeah, you can see that our project is perfectly is perfectly set. So that is that for this video. In the next video, we're going to start with the API. And then before I actually end this video, I'd like you to do something for me. Please do make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel. That actually encourages me to push out more and more contents like this. See you in the next video.